Good afternoon. Today we uh, went ahead and purchased this guy right here. This is the Blackstone 22 inch griddle uh, with the hood and the stand. Uh, it comes with uh, the propane hose and the stand. It has two heating zones on it and they're the, each one is an H style burner. Uh, so it covers the uh, area very well on the, uh, the flat top there. This is going to be a grill or griddle that we actually take with us for camping. And we're going to be replacing this one. We've had this one for uh, maybe going on five years. Uh, we liked it so much we actually had two of them. Uh, one for here, one for the cabin. So we didn't have to lug it around. But uh, this is the Cuisinart. It's got a thermostat on the top. It takes the little propane tanks and uh, attachment hose to actually the larger 20 pound tank. Drip tray, uh, I think it's cast iron, great. Unfortunately, uh, we had some problems with these, obviously due to the heat. Uh, the one at the cabin, actually one of the tabs broke off that holds this uh, diffusion plate here. And the one thing we never really liked about these is when you're cooking on them and you get the drippings down below, uh, whether they catch fire or they don't, you know, from too much grease, whether you're doing bacon or those other... Uh, fatty foods is uh the one that we keep stored up at the cabin would mold down on the bottom um so you have to get in there and clean it out every year and kind of annoying so we started using a griddle top on this instead of uh cooking directly on the grate um, so that's what we're looking forward to on this new one the griddle is not having to uh clean all the fat out from underneath and all the drippings uh, down below the grease the grease pit um, it should stay fairly brand new underneath it's got a drip tray in the back that everything will go to watched a lot of uh, videos between this one and some other ones and this being a cold rolled steel griddle versus a ceramic coated griddle uh, we wanted to go with this one we'll go ahead and get it seasoned up and then uh, make sure we take care of it uh, season it every year or every time we use it uh, to make sure that it actually stays well seasoned and doesn't rot. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, get this unpacked, find out what's in the box and get it assembled. Stay tuned. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. See it's well packaged. Nice cardboard in here. Uh, the stands on top and pull the base out. And a good portion of the weight of this box actually is from this base. Uh, the base does have some nice weight to it, so definitely it is not cheaply made. All right, uh, these should be the locking tabs, so when you open the legs up, they should lock in place. Yep, like so. And they have uh, little thumb screws. You would lengthen them as tall as you want to make the the unit. Um, very simple to level it out. All right, what else is in the box here? We have the extra conversion hose here, uh, 20 pound tank to the uh, griddle hookup. Then this is the route that we're gonna go ahead and go with. Maybe this is a three foot hose. Yep, three foot hose. The Blackstone manual. Blackstone Griddle. That was all that was in the box, and there is the griddle. Uh, definitely has more weight than the Cuisinart. Um, we'll be lifting it in and out of the back of the truck. They do make a carrying bag for it. Seems pretty heavy for the carrying bag. Uh, we'll probably we do have a cover coming for it uh, today. All right, here's the Blackstone. I noticed. Uh, one of the first things here when lifting the lid with two hands, it is, seems a little warbly, but that might, uh, when we put the, uh, solve that problem, when we put the handle on. Let's go ahead and get this box opened. Here's uh the regulator for the small propane tank. So you can see right there. It's 
They do give you drip trays and the drip tray holder. Or they give you drip tray. <laughs> and the drip tray holder. We went ahead and picked up uh, two additional packages of those drip trays at the local store where we picked up the griddle at. It's nice to just be able to toss those after you use them and not uh, bring home the grease. Okay, here is the handle. Very nice handle, nice grip. Yeah, very nice handle, comfy grip. And the side shelf. And here are the, the base feet uh, for the griddle. So here's the griddle. Let's go ahead and get the plastic off of this. This is a very nice sized griddle. All right, every griddle does have, uh, from what I was hearing, uh, some of these spots, these are weld, weld spots, uh, so not a big deal. And they left us some nice sticky tape here in the corner, so we'll work on getting that off. Uh, let's take a peek at underneath here and see how it looks. But, uh, the, the table is not really level here, so it's the bubbles kind of touching one side of the line there. But, uh, Uh, it was a little wobbly, so we just kind of tweaked it a little bit, and now it doesn't move at all. So, problem solved there. So we went ahead and uh, got the feet on, nice and sturdy. Let's go ahead and place the griddle back on. to the forward position and slide the lock. Okay, we got it finally mounted here onto the base. I'm gonna say that uh, uh, quality control on this didn't pass or did they, maybe they didn't try to assemble it. Um, the locking legs on the other side. You can get one side locked, but not the other side. It wouldn't even go in. So obviously they welded the post crooked or um, the hole was uh, drilled in the wrong spot. It should have been a little wider. Uh, but yeah, you definitely couldn't get uh, both sides in. So we had to go ahead and modify uh, one of the holes here to make it a little bit uh, bare to accept the, uh, uh, the post. So once that problem identified, uh, we were able to fix it. But uh, go ahead and got the, the drip tray on. Drip tray just simply mounts uh, right off the back right there. And we have the handle mounted. Very nice. And we got a little sticky spot here in the front corner where some of the adhesive tape was. Uh, putting that uh, display picture on here, which is kind of uh, lame, but uh, we'll get it off. And we have the stand assembled, and it has a uh, side plate there. All right, and simply this can either be put on a table like this and used, or placed on the stand and the four holes here, line up with the four holes there uh, for the feet. And we'll go ahead and uh, drop it on there, see what it looks like. All right, mounts quite nicely on the legs. Looks very nice. All right, we will go ahead and uh, start the seasoning process on this. I'll show you the other accessories that we got uh, to go with this here. We went and got a uh, 
this squirt bottle we're going to go ahead and fill this with canola oil um, so we can start off uh, uh, for when we cook them with the grill got two uh, packages of the drip trays or the cup liners for the back uh, they're non-stick griddle spray uh, they were having a sale on it so probably just uh, depending how I like this we'll either use this just the oil or maybe uh, like the print the Pam grill spray something similar the Blackstone griddle seasoning and this is what we're going to use to season the grill for the first time the griddle scraper what we'll use to clean the grill and then the chef knife uh, had to get this. I'm actually a big fan of this shape of blade and the handles are very comfy. So this will be one that goes with the griddle uh, for camping. So very nice. Those are the items and we'll go ahead and uh, get the seasoning started now. Stay tuned. All right. So we have an initial issue with uh, the left side lighting. The uh, probe electrode here uh, was bent too far up and could not reach the... Uh, uh, the H uh, element. So we got to uh, adjust both those. It takes a while for the gas to travel up and then out to all the areas so I kind of hold it a little bit for a second and then click the light. There it is. All right, grill is all assembled. We're going to start the seasoning process. Just a quick overview of the seasoning. Uh, we got uh, both burners fired up and we're going to let it run maybe about 15 minutes till we get some discoloration here. Uh, to start with, we did wash down the surface with soap and water. That will be the first and the last time the soap touches the griddle surface. We got it heating up now as soon as we see discoloration. We're going to apply some of the Blackstone griddle and seasoning thinly evenly coated across the surface until the smoking stops and it comes off of it. And then we're going to repeat the process maybe about four times. And then we'll get a comparison after color here on it. That's what it looks like currently as it's heating up. And we'll go ahead and see what the seasoning color is afterwards. All right, we're just looking at the progress here. It's still on preheat. It's been almost 10 minutes here. We're getting some nice uh, coloration here. If the camera picks it up that good but uh, nice heavy spots here and the, the outers are starting to come in right now a little darker it's gonna give another couple minutes uh, I think they recommend about 10 to 15 um, to get it seasoned up or get it hot enough uh, to be able to put the seasoning on so we'll go ahead and give it about another uh, couple minutes here and then we'll put the seasoning on all right so we're looking right there where we're going to add the seasoning to it and just a correction here for the 22 inch griddle um, it says about one tablespoon of seasoning uh, for the 28 inch it's two tablespoons and for the 36 inch it's three tablespoons so make sure you do not over season it you don't want to get build up on it so we're going to go ahead and start with the one tablespoon we're going to get it on the griddle here and move it around the edges the front the entire surface evenly and smooth as they say and then uh, we'll let it burn off until there's no more smoke and then we'll repeat the process I'd say that looks very nice. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let that smoke off now completely. Got it on nice and smooth. There's no build of it anymore with droplets. It's just a smooth layer across there. So now we're going to go ahead and let this just keep on high until uh, it stops smoking. And then we're going to add another tablespoon and repeat the process. I'm going to do this four times. All right, it is done smoking and we're ready for round two. Let's go ahead and grab another uh, approximate tablespoon here. I 
and we'll go ahead and uh, put it in the middle, let it melt up. And we'll go ahead and get it all around the grill. All right, and we'll let that smoke off, and we'll wait for round three. This is number three, fourth one, last one coming here, and uh, then we'll see how she looks and let her cool down. So that's looking really nice on the seasoning. Right, looks like the last one's burning off, almost completely done. I'm just gonna see how hot the grill top is here. It's been going for a good 30, 45 minutes on high, so the results here. That corner. Hottest part's going to look to be in, right in this area here, in this area here, which you would expect. Yep, 540, 535, right in those areas are going to be the hottest. All right, that is the last of the seasoning. Uh, about another couple minutes on uh, the grill here. Uh, just as the rain is starting to come and the wind, perfect timing. So we'll go ahead and get this grill turned off and let it start to cool. All right, so now that we got the grill seasoned, which went very easily, um, just a couple of follow-up items on, on the grill here. Uh, things we could improve on or things that could be improved on on this grill uh, the lid is uh, very thin it is a little wobbly you can see it uh, perhaps adding a double layer uh, to that obviously would make it cost more but would feel a little bit more uh, solid of a unit um, obviously adds another little bit of weight to it as well but you know very thin over from the front up and over the top uh, double line would help retain heat as well as uh, give a little bit more stability to the feel of the lid. Uh, another thing was the, the fit and finish issue that we had putting the griddle actually on top of the lower base. Uh, the pegs did not line up. Uh, as you can see from this point of view, I'm not sure if the camera made out, the back post is crooked on this one, which made it hard to get this front lined up and locked in. Um, you could get one side locked in, but not the other. So we had to go ahead and make the hole a little bit bigger here since we weren't gonna be able to move these steel pins that are welded on. Uh, that was an issue. So we just went ahead and widened this little hole here. Um, so just kind of quality fit and finish things. Other than that, I mean, the grill seems like it's gonna be a great griddle and uh, we should have lots of fun on it. I love the dual grill design, uh, dual element, H element designs on this. So. It puts out plenty of heat, uh, like I said, 24,000 BTUs with uh, 530 degrees in the hot zones and less, slightly less around the areas. But uh, other than that, we're gonna have some fun griddling on this. So uh, we'll give some feedback uh, after we've used it a couple of times and um, go from there. And I heard one of the things you don't wanna do is just to see, just go ahead and throw like uh, animal fat on it, like bacon or things like that. A big no-no, you want to make sure you get this grill seasoned properly before you actually start uh, grilling on it. All right, I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe.